guys, it's Champion Ashley, and welcome to the new video. So I finally got a Nintendo Switch this Christmas, and since I also got Breath of the Wild 2 as a gift, I have been for the past few weeks been fighting the urge to play or work on videos. But while I was out on my Spirit Orb gathering run, something hit me hard, like a brick to the face. The fact that Shika monks are in these shrines. Shika, when they have supposedly been missing for the entire series, it got me thinking about the Shika and how on earth a culture that has been living in the shadows since Skyward Sword and possibly even before that would be able to create technology so advanced. Well, let's first look into their tech and see what we can find. First, let's take a look at the technology itself. They have powerful weapons, swords, axes, spears, arrows, armor, bikes, walking robots with laser eyes, four giant walking slash flying automatons that can weaken the greatest evil in Hyrule, and five pillars that don't really do anything. I'll get to that later. Point is, all of these weapons are not only powerful, but also seem to be focused on taking down Ganon and his lackeys. Except the bike. They just seem to invent that to make you ditch Epona. Did Sheikha have a secret vendetta against horses? <coughs> Whoa, wait, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Back to the theory. However, you may have noticed that I didn't mention one thing. The shrines that all seem to be focused on puzzles and testing strength. But why? Why are these shrines dedicated to only testing brain power and strength and not, I don't know, something else like homes or something? But the biggest point that I need to highlight is, what's with the aesthetic change? The Sheikah are known as the Shadow Folk, operating in the shadows and having a theme around purple. Yet here they are, they seem to like blue stuff. What's with that? Well, I think we can find an answer all the way back here, in the Lanaru Desert of Skyward Sword, the ancient civilization, the time shift stones, and the ancient robots. Back when Breath of the Wild was first revealed as Zelda Wii U at E3 2014, geez, four years ago? I feel old. Anyway, many of us theorists at the time were united in saying that the Guardian and the Ancient Arrow were products of this ancient Lanaru desert civilization. But now I'm going to bring this idea back from the dead and put a spin on it. That the Sheikah created these weapons from the tech of the Lanaru desert civilization to combat Demise and his minions. Remember, at the end of Skyward Sword, Demise cursed Link and Zelda so that an embodiment of his hatred would follow them for eternity. And may I remind you that the Sheikah's true purpose is to serve the goddess Hylia, who is, after Skyward Sword, reincarnated as Zelda. Therefore, this curse is a huge problem for them. Having Hylia's greatest enemy be able to come back from the dead for eternity? So, in response to this problem, the Sheikah, possibly lit by Impa at the time, go to the Lanaru Desert, find the technology, and start producing super weapons to prepare Hyrule for Demise's inevitable return. This includes creating the Divine Beast to weaken Ganon, the Guardians to call Ganon's forces, and the weapons to arm the Royal Guard with good weapons to protect the kingdom from the monsters, something they desperately need. But it's the shrines that are maybe the most important of them all. All of the shrines fulfill a certain purpose. To test the chosen hero, whether by strength or smart, the shrines all exist to prepare Hylia's chosen knight for his battle with Ganon. And about the pillars. I honestly can't do justice to this topic since another Zelda theorist, Nintendo Black Crisis, did a fantastic upload back in September where he explained that the five pillars around Hyrule Castle are pretty much demise detection pillars. Click right here to check out. He goes into more detail there. But for the sake of this theory, I'm going to say that the Sheikah created these pillars around Hyrule Castle so that they could detect Ganon early and prepare for his return. But now, let's get to the shrines. 
Why are there Shika meditating in these places who give you strange orbs that have links to Hylia? Well, it's all part of their intricate plan. After all of the Shika finish their weapons, they seal themselves within the shrines to wait for their hero to come. While they wait, they pray to the goddess Hylia, who still lingers at the edge of time. As they meditate for thousands of years, they are granted the spirit orbs by Hylia to give to Link once he has completed the trials in the shrines so that he may give four of them back to Hylia and get more powerful, helping to complete their goal. Looking at it, I realize this is honestly an extremely complex plan, but it is effective. Though I know you, and I know you're still not satisfied yet and still have questions. How could the Sheikah have created such powerful and huge super weapons and have no mention of them anywhere? I mean, having four divine beasts, hundreds of guardians, 120 shrines, and 15 towers scattered across the land with five gigantic pillars around the biggest castle in Hyrule. You're not going to forget that, right? Well, actually, the game clears this detail up for us. In the cutscene where Impa explains the backstory of Calamity Ganon, it shows that one of the divine beasts, Fana Boris, was hidden away in a mountain, and even outside of cutscenes, we know that much of the Sheikah technology was hidden away in the ground. All of those towers were buried in the ground along with some of the shrines. The five detection pillars were also hidden away in the ground, so far down that they couldn't even be found by Zelda. It was a precautionary measure by the Sheikah to make sure that their technology, and their race, was kept safe under the surface until the opportunity to hit Ganon hard was right, when Hyrule would be able to find these creations. All of this just to make sure Hylia and her chosen hero would win against Ganon. Thanks guys for watching! Make sure to comment down below what you guys thought! Did I nail it this time? Tell me what you think! Huge thanks to Nintendo Black Crisis for his great video explaining the five pillars. Go check out his channel here! He's done some great videos on Breath of the Wild already, including the possibility that Zelda loves Link! That one's my favorite. So thanks guys for watching and enjoy the video. Bye!